So all of this kind of came out Friday before the Pac-12 title game and during the Pac-12 title game, et cetera, et cetera. It appears that Miami is getting their ducks in a row. They are going hard after. It's not official yet, but it looks like it will be soon. Clemson's athletic director, Dan Radakovich, uh, is possibly going to Miami. And him coming in, he's going to be the highest paid AD in the country, uh, making, I think, $3 million or more per season, which is kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. But he's possibly bringing with him Mario Cristobal from Oregon. Now, None of this is confirmed. This is all rumor. Again, Cristobal played at Miami, has family that lives in Miami. He is Miami. Like, that's what he is. Miami is not what Oregon is in today's college football. But much the same way that we saw with USC, if they are prepared to make an investment into the program and really go after this thing, does that surprise you that Cristobal and, and old Dan from Clemson would make their way down to Miami? I, I think it's surprising that they almost have a deal in place, so they're going hard after Dan, and they still haven't fired Manny. <laughs> how like, how shitty well, is that, is by job, the way? This is a job that's not open right now. Like, it is currently not open. It's so ridiculous. And they already have their next head coach, and this is not like a coach-in-waiting situation. It's so it's so awful. Like, like, like I'm okay with behind the scenes doing what you got to do to kind of get a feel for who you're going. But once you have an idea, I've got a list of names. I'm comfortable with these names. All right, then you fire your coach yes. so that he can move on with his life. But leaving him sitting in limbo is just a shit thing to do. Yes, this school is proven to be just about as awfully ran as anything I can ever imagine. I mean, there are people at Tennessee and Knoxville that are that are laughing at Miami <laughs> for how poorly this is going. It's it's fairly ridiculous. You know, hey, Casey jumped in. What's up with the DB coach for Oklahoma recruiting for USC? There's there's a lot to that. We might hit that on the Tuesday show. But it's 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 a compliance issue. I will I will tell you that. You can't work for one school and, and be recruiting for another uh without officially being on the day, we'll we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. We got too much to discuss today, but yes, it, Miami. Uh, we we kind of saw USC doing this for a long time with Clay Helton, right? Like they messing around behind the scenes. Texas kind of did it with Tom Herman. It was, hey, you know, we you're the coach, but if we can get this guy, hey, you're probably not going to be the coach anymore. And that's just a shitty way to go through it, right? I mean, like I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just flat ass tell you that. Texas doesn't have a losing season under Herman this year. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I agree with that 100%. Like, to not be able to go 6 and 6 in the Big 12 is an absolute shame. It's a, and they they do there's, have a win. There's no there's uh, no excuses for that. They do have a win over a conference champion this year. They beat Louis, or uh, Louisiana in week 1. <laughs> Who is in the top 25? Might be in the top 20 by the end of this. Eric jumped in and said, uh, that's fine if you get the right OC and let it make decisions. Uh, that's talking about uh, Matt Miller jumped in and said, Cristobal is a great coach. He's a great recruiter. That is true. And Eric said, that's fine if you get the right OC and let him make decisions. Uh, I, think, I think Cristobal is going to end up a lot like Ed. I think he has potential to be really good. He also has potential for it to go off the rails in Miami. Yes, 100%. Hundred thousand percent. You're right. Eric said Oregon insiders don't expect Cristobal to leave, but anything could happen. That's the thing. It would not surprise me if he goes back to Miami if they are willing to put a big investment into the program and prove it. Like there's got to be a way. If you go out and get Clemson's AD, that's a pretty big investment. You're you're showing some proof. There's proof of concept there. If you don't get how, him, how bad? How bad are things collapsing at Clemson right now? Mike Dabba, Dabba's about to be exposed as the greatest fraud. People <laughs> made fun of Ed O, and people called him a fraud for 2019. The, the, we, the veil is about to come off the face of Dabo and Clemson because I've told you for a long time, I think you believe this too. I don't know this. I think I think I think Vitables was the man holding that entire program up. Most certainly the last two seasons, but it, it wasn't no, just I that. Think, like I if think you, some of the, I think some of those championship years too. Uh, yeah, that's that's part of it. Like he's always been built on great coordinators. 
Right? That's it's what it's always been. If he can go out and get some more but really good it coordinators. Wasn't, he was always built on great coordinators. It was he's he's had this one coordinator his entire time there. And well, all he had to do was worry about the offense. No, nah, Brent was uh God, they brought they had somebody else before Brent that did it pulling up the Wikipedia. Not long. Uh he's I mean, he's been at at Clemson for a minute since twenty I know you're right, twenty twelve. So yeah, yeah, he's, he's been Brent, there for Brent was there nine years. almost the entire time. Yeah, Dabo's been there what twelve? He's been there since two thousand eight, like oh, no, middle of two thousand eight. Yeah. So, so we hired him uh, in the two thousand twelve well, season. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. since the championship started. Yes, yes, he's been there. He's been there basically Dabo's entire career, I think, and that's when the ship started to turn because when Dabo first got there, they weren't great. It right. took a little while to quote unquote build it. Well, who did he bring in that started building it? That you are not uh, incorrect on that. So Casey said, Clemson will bounce back, in my opinion, not because Dabo is a good coach, but because it's a big brand. Well, it's a big brand but now. They weren't a big brand but, before Brett. Right. Like they, they, they were not a big brand, like at all. They, they were not even close. They were not no. one of the class of the ACC. They were just another school. So They're getting their ass kicked by South Carolina every year. <laughs> Matt Miller jumped in. As a UT fan, it wasn't about this year. Herman burned bridges and recruiting had plummeted. Uh, recruiting was still actually fairly decent, but... He just could not develop players for one, and for two, uh, yes, he burned all of the bridges necessary to be the coach at Texas. Like all the booster and whatnot bridges, the boosters wanted him out. It wasn't to do with wins and losses. It was just he he wrecked that thing. Hey, by the way, congratulations! You got you got your yes man. You got somebody who won't burn bridges for you. He you also right. won't win football games. So no, I, I told you that at the beginning of this season. Yeah, when all this, this is went what on. happens when you hire bootlickers. Okay, oh. this is what happens when you hire people that just bend over and take it. All right, there's a reason they're willing to bend over and take it. They know they bring nothing to the table. They're not good. Yep, yep. You are not incorrect. They're good at saying yes. On top of that, the uh, so we talked about Clemson falling apart, all that good stuff. Tony Elliott, the OC, who, of course, had a terrible season. Uh, it looks like he's in the running for both the Virginia job and the Duke job. That's so sad. That's so sad. I don't know how that he's, works. but He's going to be terrible at both of them. Eric jumped in, by the way, said Tom Herman to Oregon as OC. Uh, Herman's Tom come Herman's out. Tom staying in the NFL. Yeah, he said he's staying in the NFL. Now, he's he's just an analyst in the NFL right now, isn't he? Or a, yeah, uh, but he, will, he will work his way He will work his way up. This was his first year in the NFL. Yeah. NFL coaches. It, the NFL is a very tight-knit group, okay? It's it's kind of hard to break in there. That There's a reason that all of the greats all have the same last name as former greats. There's just nepotism's a bitch in the NFL, all right? It's true. It, and it's so true. trying to break into that, yeah, I mean, it's just a hard thing to do. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.